But first, content to continue to level personal sledges of Peter Dutton, the Treasurer Jim Chalmers has today again backed in ASIO boss Mike Burgess when it comes to his recent comments that support for Hamas should not rule out someone getting a visa to come to Australia. I'm not going to detail or second guess the way ASIO do their important work, the Treasurer said. I think it's important we don't fall for Peter Dutton's trap. Now, this is the same ASIO chief, let's not forget, that Labor threw off the National Security Committee Cabinet and only brought him back when our terror threat level was increased. Joining me now to discuss this and more, former Prime Minister Tony Abbott. Well, Tony, welcome to the program. First up, in simple terms, do you believe that support for Hamas is consistent with the character test for a visa to come to Australia? Of course it's not, Peter. And it's extraordinary that the government seems to think that you can offer support to Hamas and still be entitled to come to Australia. Frankly, the only people from that part of the world uh, who should be able to come to Australia who pe are people who have demonstrated opposition to Hamas. Because let's face it, Hamas is an apocalyptic death cult. Uh, people in Gaza have been schooled from infancy uh, that Jews are evil, that the West is evil. Um, I don't see how anyone uh, who thinks that uh, could sincerely say the citizenship pledge, uh, support for democratic values, uh, support for uh, the rights and respect, uh, rights and, uh, and, and values that Australians take for granted. So, look, uh, unless people are opposed to Hamas, really there's no place for them in a cohesive Australian society. If you listen to the government, if you listen to the Prime Minister, he says that they, they are doing everything that's always been done. They're using the very same processes that Australia has always used. Nothing's changed. Now, that's not right, is it? No, completely false. Uh, yes, <clears throat> my government brought some 12,000 uh, people uh, from persecuted minorities to Australia out of the Syrian war zone in 2015. But every one of them was interviewed by Australian officials in Jordan. Uh, every one of them was biometrically checked. Every one of them passed uh, security vetting. Um, they were chosen by us. They weren't self-selected. Uh, and they were fleeing um, a Hamas-like organisation. Uh, they weren't people who were um, fleeing uh, from a terrorist-controlled war zone um, where they may well have been on the terrorist side. This weekend, Muslim Votes Matter, the group will officially launch their national campaign in Broadmeadows, north of Melbourne. Now, one of the keynote speakers at the launch, interestingly, of course, uh, is from Muslim Vote UK. I have talked about this before. Mm -hmm. I have said that here in Australia they will want to use the campaign nous out of the UK, given that they really cut through, in particular electorates, n not on issues relevant to Britain, but on Palestinian Gaza politics imported into the UK. And I suspect that's exactly what they're going to try on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, uh, the last thing we need are sectarian political parties in this country. And we certainly don't want in this country a sectarian political party uh, based on extreme Islamism and based on support for an apocalyptic death cult. Now, yes, we've seen uh, quite a few Gaza candidates get elected both nationally and locally in Britain. <laughs> I'm, a, as you know, uh, normally an admirer of most things British, but this is something that this is not something from Britain that we should be importing here into Australia. Can I play you a comment today from the Deputy PM, Richard Miles, when asked about opening or reopening our embassy in Ukraine? Have a listen. I think we all want to see uh, the embassy reopen. It's a matter of doing so when it's safe and um, and and when, when we're able to do this in, in the way that we would want to in terms of all the safety obligations that we have, and that's something that's being currently uh, worked through. Now, I know you've been to Ukraine a number of times. Peter, I know you recently pathetic. had a meeting. Yeah. Yeah? It's pathetic. 
Yeah, this is pathetic. It's absolutely pathetic. I mean, this idea that it is too dangerous for us to go back to Kyiv when some 70 other countries have got their embassy in Kyiv, it's, it's just hard to credit. I mean, we're not a nation of cowards. We're not a nation of wimps. And uh, DFAT staff uh, are, are more than capable of, of going back uh, into Ukraine, and they should be there. I, I mean, our embassy was in the same building as the Canadian embassy. The Canadians have been back for two years. We should be back there straight away.